Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. One more time. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So let our King be lifted. Let your name be lifted. Let your praise be lifted. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, you be lifted high, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted high, higher, be lifted higher. Let us. shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love Sing holy, 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 high and lifted up, shining, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. 
Father, tonight we pray that this indeed will be a moment of encounter. We pray tonight that this will open us up to new realms, new levels of grace. That your word will come with power unrestrained to heal, to deliver, to lift, to transform, to give direction in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you have your way in our midst and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Please give Jesus a big hand clap and you may be seated. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching along the theme of the conference and then somewhere along the line we will pause to pray and wrap up for the night wherever he leads us will follow accordingly but whilst that is happening like I have urged us let us be sensitive because when he comes he comes to make he comes to build he comes to lift and he comes to empower in the name of Jesus Christ let's start tonight with Isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 1 to 5 Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 1 to 5 comfort ye comfort ye my people saith your God we're reading to 5 speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned for she had received of the Lord double for all her sins next verse the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make straight in the desert a high way for our God every valley he says shall be exalted somebody should shout amen and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough play, places plain verse 5 and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it the Bible is very clear as to the fact that God desires that the fullness of his glory be revealed in the midst of his people it has always been his desire that his people experience the full weight of his glory now in very simple terms for the sake of this conference the glory of anything is an attempt to describe what makes it valuable so the glory of a thing describes its essence and every feature represented in it that makes it worth our admiration and worth our desire when you talk about glory the root expression of the word glory is the weightiness of a thing it was used in ancient times to measure money you know the coins that they had gold so the heavier the weightier the more valuable so when we talk about the glory of a thing anything at all we have to investigate the various components that make whatever that is special or great or unique i give you an instance the glory of an electronic gadget like this phone or your iPad or whatever it is for you to appreciate the glory of that gadget you will have to study the features that make that gadget expensive and makes it desirable are we together now you cannot truly understand the glory of a thing until you can dissect the various characteristics of that object so when we talk about the glory of God, we refer to all the dimensions of God that make him God. The glory of God is a summation of his wisdom, 
his power his goodness his mercy his kindness everything that all together makes God God and the Bible says he desires that the full expression of all the multifaceted dimensions of him find expression in our lives and across our territories and may that be someone's um, may that be someone's miracle tonight that your life will suddenly become a capture do you know what that means it means uh, the, the apostle puts it this way he calls us living epistles you know what that means you become a continuation of what was written in the bible that means if someone did not have his quiet time he will stop feeling bad when he sees you because you are a continuation of the scripture that he was reading everything he read that he did not understand your life becomes an explanation of it a revelation of the glory of God in Isaiah 35 we'll read very quickly from verse 1 to 6 then I'll begin to teach Isaiah chapter 35 1 to 6 the wilderness it says and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it the excellency of Carmel and Sharon they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God next verse it says strengthen ye the weak and confirm the feeble knees say unto them that are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance even God with a recompense he will come and save you the eyes when the glory of the Lord is revealed part of the many things that happen as attestations to the fact that his glory has been revealed is that the eyes of the blind will open spiritually and physically the ears of the deaf will be unstopped verse 6 the bible says then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for in the wilderness shall the waters break out and streams in the desert the glory of God is a revelation of everything that makes God God. So when you talk about manifesting or revealing the glory of God, it means that you desire to see all the attributes of God in full display. The attributes of wisdom. Wisdom beyond your age. Wisdom beyond your level of exposure. Wisdom beyond um your your education a manifestation of wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers the bible calls it the hidden wisdom of god that he has reserved for our glory so there is an expression of the glory of god revealed as wisdom there is the expression of god revealed as power the ability to be invincible, to subdue principalities and powers, to subdue circumstances and to bring them to the obedience of Christ. Can I tell you this? When you say and it happens, you are powerful. The litmus test of spiritual power is found in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4. We'll go there maybe later on or in another session. But this is what it means to have power in this kingdom. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now watch power in action. And God said and there was. That is power. When you say and it becomes, it is a display of genuine power. When you say and it becomes. 
it is a revelation of the glory of God that is not given to man. Man cannot demonstrate that level of possibility unassisted. When you speak and it happens, it reveals to us that you are being assisted by an agency that is not human. Because humans cannot just speak and it happens. And then the Bible says in verse 4, it is not just to speak and it happens. The Bible says we must see it and what appears must be good. If you say it and it happens and we see it and it is good, it is the power of God. Listen carefully. This is the highest standard given to man to press into. God demonstrates what he means by spiritual power. We are discussing attributes that make up the glory. When the centurion came to Jesus. He said, for I am a man under authority. I have servants. I can say to one, go, and he goeth. I can say to one, come, and he cometh. When you tell things, go, and they go. When you tell things, come, and they come. When you tell situations, leave, and they leave. You are demonstrating a level of power that no human was born with. The revelation of the glory of God manifesting possibilities that are not human the wisdom of God the power of God are we blessed there are also certain attributes other attributes of the glory of God for instance the blessing of the Lord upon the life of a man I'm just giving you a background and then we'll teach on the core the core topic that the Lord put in my heart tonight but we have to understand this for instance the blessing of the Lord when you manifest certain levels of wealth and the blessing of the Lord that is beyond the intelligence of men it's not just about the display of money you demonstrate the intelligence of a government that is not earthly. Are we together now? The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It says, let not the strong man or the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. It says, but let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. There are other dimensions of glory, like speed. You see, let me tell you, the highest level of dominion is dominion over time. Listen carefully. You can have dominion over things, but when you have dominion over time, because the unit of destiny is time. True dominion is dominion over time. Because you see, from a human standpoint, time only moves forward. It cannot move backward. Are we together now? And that your destiny is represented in time. So when time goes before you and you do not maximize it, you are already disadvantaged. The ability to have dominion over time and command things like speed and restoration. Now that is real dominion over time. Where God takes your 10 years and puts it in one year. There are other expressions of glory like favor. When someone just decides to invest their credibility, their love, their resources upon you, it is not normal because the heart of man by default is desperately wicked. Whatever will make a man forget about his own agenda and turn to you with a determination to see that you succeed, it cannot be human. Are we together? And there is a clear proof of favor. When the favor of God is at work in you, the Bible gives us very clear indices. For instance, Exodus 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Being empty has a spiritual explanation. 
Are we together? It takes favor to be established territorially that God will give you space because there is a dimension of dominion that is represented in land. And it takes the manifestation of favor for that to happen. Psalms 44 and verse 3. Psalms 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand thine and thy arm. The light of thy countenance. Because thou hadst a favor unto them. There are many other dimensions of favor, like honor. You know what honor is? Honor means to be perceived, to match your true worth. It is possible to be this high, but to be perceived this low. Honor makes sure that the perception people have about you is a true representation of your sacrifice. Many people do not have honor. They are good people, but that grace is not upon their life. Are we together? Yes. So these are the various expressions of glory. So when your life becomes an effulgence of the glory of God, we expect to see in perpetual display every day these dimensions from his wisdom to his favor to speed to excellence. You see that now. Excellence is another expression of that glory. To excel means to surpass ordinary standards. Oh Lord our God, he says, how excellent. His name is not only great, his name excels. Is someone learning tonight? Yes. So God desires that my life and your life become and remain expressions of his glory. That be, our lives will consistently be testaments of what God can do in and through men. So from his wisdom, to his wealth, to his favor, to his blessing, to speed, to honor. Your life becomes a, a recycling experience of this divine attribute. It will be impossible for this dark world to ignore you under that condition. The Bible says, arise, it says, shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. And then verse 3 of Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Gentiles or nations shall come to your light and even their proud kings to the brightness of your rising. Listen, it is impossible to be ignored when your life becomes a perpetual effulgence of these attributes of glory. When Jesus walked upon the earth, listen, you know what made Jesus unique? It was not just that he was the son of God. They saw a display. Never had they seen such a rich combination of godlike qualities in a man. Never had they seen a display of wisdom and favor and power and love and kindness. That invincibility was, they said, who are you? The wisdom of God. Then the favor of God. Then the power of God, he will rebuke devils and they would leave. What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. To hear is not enough, they must obey. Are we together? Listen, I'm teaching you this because Jesus said, As my father had sent me, he said, so send I you. You know what it means? As my father has sent me with the same equipping, I send you. Your life should never be ordinary by any standard. Regardless the background, regardless the geography of your assignment, you don't have to be a man of God. You just need to be a believer with understanding. Unfortunately, dear people of God, many people do not live up to that standard. It is a mandate upon us 
that our lives reveal the glory of God. Here's how the Bible puts it. Jesus was teaching in Matthew chapter 5. When you read from verse 13, it says you are the salt of the earth. The assignment of salt is to add value and to preserve. Is that true? You are the salt of the earth, he says. That if the salt has lost its sever, wherewith shall it be salted? It is good for nothing but to be thrown down and, you know, cast down and trodden underfoot by men. Then he now tells us you are the light of the world. You are in the similitude of a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone there. So let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deed. The display of these divine attributes. According to God's desire for men, your lips should not be the only instrument preaching the gospel. Your life should also be an evangelist. Not just in holiness and character. That is wonderful. But there should be a display of such possibility that people will look at you and say, is Saul also one of the prophets? From whence did you fetch this level of excellence and intelligence and power and grace? Psalms 82 and verse 5, the tragedy. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, the Bible says, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in verse 7, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The gap between prophecy and experience is knowledge. Not the knowledge of what you want, the knowledge of what it takes to manifest what you want. Many people know what they want. Midwifing prophecy and experience is knowledge. High level spiritual illumination. It is for this reason he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the maturing of the saints. That the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry until we all come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Are we learning? For the time that I have, let me pick one of those attributes or one of those requirements that will help us manifest the glory of God. And I'll just give a charge on it and we'll pray. Hallelujah. John 11 and verse 40, Jesus was teaching. This was Jesus about to raise Lazarus. The Bible says how that he loved Lazarus. Now Lazarus was dead. And they came crying and were probing as to why Jesus did not come on time. And Jesus made a very instructive statement. He said, Jesus said to her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldest see the glory of God. You can see the glory of God manifesting as the power of God to raise the dead. But that you need to understand that your faith must be alive. I want to teach very briefly about faith. You know, I have discovered sincerely that most believers talk about faith. Most believers write books about faith even. But there are very few people who truly understand Bible faith. Hallelujah. If you do not understand the subject of faith, you will never truly be able to manifest the glory of God. There is a relationship between your faith in God and the expression of the glory of God in and through your life. If you are with me, please shout Amen. Four times in scripture, the Bible tells us, I'll just read it through. We may not have the time to project it for, sake of, for the sake of time. So we'll, I'll just read it so that we'll go to the main discourse. The just, the Bible says, shall live by faith. 
four scriptures you may want to write this down very quickly habakkuk chapter 2 1 verse 4 it tells us that the just lives by faith habakkuk 2 1 4 romans 1 17 also tells us that the just shall live even by his faith romans 1 17 galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 also repeats this that the just shall live by faith galatians 3 11. finally hebrews chapter 10 and verse hebrews chapter 10 is that 38 that the just shall live by faith so four scriptures habakkuk 2 4 romans 1 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 and verse 38 all of these scriptures point very clearly that the just lives by faith in mark chapter 11 mark chapter 11 from verse 22 to 24 theologically speaking this is one of the classics on the discourse of jesus about the subject of faith he rebuked the three that would not produce and it withered the disciples were perplexed they wondered how a man could just speak to a tree and not use an axe or anything physical to fell it and by in 24 hours the tree would have withered and jesus was giving them an understanding he said have faith in god men like papa hagen would interpret this to mean have the faith of god next verse 23 verily i say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible leaves you with an assurance that he shall have whatsoever he saith next verse here is the law of faith therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray believe that you receive them and thou shall have them are we together hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 it says now faith is the substance the tangibility of the things that you hope for it calls it the evidence of the things not seen the evidence the purchasing power like you can ask me I can ask you to give me a bottle of water or get me a bottle of water. The moment I give you 100 Naira or 200 Naira, I didn't give you the bottle of water, but I gave you the power to purchase it. Is that true? That's what faith is, the currency that purchases spiritual realities for us in the realm of the spirit. It's called faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. Let's look at verse 17. Romans 10, 17. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It tells you that faith is mobile. It can move from one place to the other. It can move from a location outside your spirit into your spirit. Faith cometh. Faith cometh and the bible says it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god let's define faith in very simple terms what is faith please look up faith is not just believing this is where many sincere believers get it wrong faith is more than believing believing is part of the process of faith but faith is not believing so many people tell you, I believe. That's wonderful. And you may be right. But just because you believe does not mean you have finished walking in keeping with the law of faith. I believe God. I believe I will be healed. I believe I will prosper. I believe the land will be good for me. I believe my children will be blessed. There are many people believing and that is wonderful. But hear me, if all you do is just believe, meaning to agree, that is not enough. There are conditions. Listen, every promise in scripture has very specific conditions connected to it for its manifestation. Believing 
is one of the requirements but not the only requirement are we together let's define faith here is my definition of faith that faith is the name given to the action that we take the name given to the action that we take actions of obedience based on our conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word faith is the name given to the action of obedience that we take not just believing the name given to the action of obedience that we take that action is based on our conviction number one of who God is and then the integrity of his word this is Bible faith please let me have two gentlemen just come here I want to illustrate something any two gentlemen at all please come thank you watch this let one of you stand here I believe you can all see them you just stand here my friend come stand I want to show you what many believers do that we call faith now watch this let's assume this is what they both desire are we together and now I have told you that I am benevolent enough to let you have this it is my will and my desire for you to have in this instance this handkerchief now this gentleman when I ask you to come and pick it, tell me you are coming and tell me you believe me, but don't walk. Are you ready? Watch what many of us do. So, I am God in this example. Here is your healing. Here is your breakthrough. Here is your lifting. Here is the favor that I desire to give you. Like I said in my word, come and have it. Are you seeing now? I'm giving it to him. He believes that I'm not lying. And yet he does not have it five years he's not had it 10 years he's not had it 15 years he's not had it his pain now begins to build a theology about god that god cannot reward just because he has been 15 years practicing what he believes to be faith he will mentor other people after his limitation that all it takes is to just believe now, I'm not being critical. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Then comes this fine young man who now understands what faith is. Now, when I ask you, you speak and walk to me. The condition is that you walk to me. Come, pick this. In one year, he has gotten it. A result that this man desired for 20 years. And now you are wondering, this is unfair because faith is not just believing faith is fulfilling the condition attached to commit god the bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience if your obedience is complete in one word faith is obedience in one word faith is obedience in one word faith is obedience if there is no obedience component to your definition of faith it is not bible faith there may be speaking there may be crying there may be praying but if it does not culminate to obedience in fact you can even take action if it's not an action of obedience it is still not faith back to my example one more time please stand gentlemen if i ask you to come here walk to that gentleman come and pick this he is taking action but it's not an action of obedience he will still suffer like the person who did not take action many people are taking action based on what they think should produce results you don't just act the way you want you act you i prophesied as i was commanded not as i wanted are we learning Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. So faith in one word is obedience. Obedience to the scriptural requirements. The scriptural requirements that commit God to reveal his glory in you. 
obedience to the scriptural requirements that commit God to reveal his glory in you. This is very powerful. That means for you to manifest Bible faith, you must understand what God has connected, has the, the conditions connected to every promise. Knowing the promise is not enough. You must understand the scriptural requirement that commits God for that promise to be made manifest. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. For sake of time, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do, observe to do, not just to know, observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. It says that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. This is the promise. Claiming that you will rise above the nations is wonderful, but it will only end you in frustration. There is a condition attached to it. And all this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Most believers have not paid attention to study the participatory roles that they have to play in committing God to reveal his glory in and through them. Whilst Ebed was ministering, I just sat there and I was enjoying the song, but I was also enjoying the excellence. And I thought to myself, look at this man acting my message. I could see a display of competence, not just the spirituality. And you would think it's just grace. It is grace, but it is the enabling grace because something was done. Excellence has an equation. Something plus something equals excellence. Are we together? You will have to find out the price of competence and rehearsals and discipline and diligence that produce what you celebrated as the manifestation of the glory of God. Now, when you see the glory of God in dis on display, it doesn't look like anything was done to prepare them. Remember, the nation of Israel wanted to see the glory of God and he told them, here is the condition. You are going to go through constraints for three days. Sanctifying yourself if it is that glory you want to see. There is always a condition. Please look up. You want to prosper in the kingdom and manifest the glory of God. It's not just about claiming prosperity and jumping up and down. There are laws that you must walk in keeping with that enable that dimension of glory to be revealed in you. For instance, the law of diligence. For instance, the law of relationships. For instance, the law of creativity. These are all principles that synergize themselves together. You want to excel in life. You have to walk in keeping with the principles of competence. The discipline of mastery. The Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless and except he strives lawfully. Are we together? Wishing and hoping that things change will be a total waste of time. Wishing and hoping and superstitiously just waiting for things to change is a total waste of time we have to understand that if we desire to see the glory of God revealed in our lives we must understand the principle of faith the principle of obedience the Bible says that when men say there is a casting down we will say there is a lifting up he did not say we will think he didn't say we will lift he says we will say so your words is part of the instruments of constructing that power that you'll be lifted to. So you speak regardless what you see. You are declaring because the word of God says that your words is part of the ingredients that make for your greatness. 
that means the assignment to discipline and culture yourself to only speak words that are consistent with scripture is your participatory role in seeing that a great destiny happens you cannot keep speaking words like one who is demonized and have the destiny of one who is disciplined in building with scripture it cannot happen because remember he sits upon a throne that is made of righteousness and justice are we learning? Yes, sir. Bible faith is based on two attributes of God. Please write it quickly. And then we will pray. You want to manifest Bible faith? It is predicated on two attributes of God. Very quickly. Attribute number one is called his integrity bible faith is hinged on two attributes of god number one his integrity the word integrity comes from the expression or the word integer sameness consistency numbers chapter 23 and verse 29 Numbers 23 and 29. Numbers chapter 19. Sorry. 23, 19. 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. It's a weakness in man that if not assisted through transformation, lying is something that is enshrined in men. For various reasons, they lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. That means he does not make mistakes. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Do you know what this means? That every time God speaks, he submits to what he says. When God speaks, even him is bound by what he has said. In ancient times, kings were bound by their words. If they spoke foolishly, they would have to pay the price of stamping a foolish statement or speaking foolishly. Remember in the Bible, there were kings who even were willing to give half of their kingdom for silly reasons. It was lack of wisdom in a king that removed the head of a prophet called John the Baptist. For the dance of a young girl, he was willing to give even half of his kingdom without counsel. And he could not reverse it again. And John died. That's how powerful the word of a king is. Everybody say integrity. Can I tell you this? There are men who are sincere but they do not have integrity. Not because they are bad. It takes a lot of factors to have integrity. I can tell you I will meet you by six. And my car spoils. Regardless the excuse. With respect to that appointment, I did not show integrity. Correct? Now, that's not, that does not mean I am bad or evil. I, am, I was incapacitated. Factors happen beyond my control. But the Bible says when God speaks, he has examined all the factors. There is no such thing as speaking. And later he says, oh, I, I didn't know you are from Plateau State to, for me to have made such a statement that I will lift you. I didn't know your situation was peculiar. I didn't know that there would be a pandemic. God is not a man. That means you can trust what he says. This is powerful because see, dear people of God, there are no guarantees in life. Nobody gives you any guarantee anywhere. Young people, listen. Waiting for someone to guarantee your success is a total waste of time. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye